Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is Sunday morning. I am going to meet friends today, so I thought I would do a quick get ready with me. The main thing I want to put on my face today and talk to you about is the New Girl Anne Foundation, the terracotta one. I talked about getting the samples of that in my April and May beauty inventory update video, so I will link that up in the eye if you've not seen it already. It won't be anything too exciting in terms of the actual makeup look itself. It is quarter past 11, so I don't really have time to be doing anything over the top, but yeah, I thought I would put the camera on, have a chat with you while I'm getting ready and show you this foundation in action. This will be the first time that I've used it, so very much my first impressions and then I'll check in once I'm back later tonight to talk about how it's worn and whatever. So on that note, in terms of what we are starting with, I've got no makeup on my face yet, obviously. What I've done skincare wise this morning, I've used my Kiehl's Iris Essence, my Kiehl's Hydro Plump. I've got no vitamin C daytime serum at the moment. That's actually something I want to buy when I'm in town today. So from there, it was straight on. I'm using the Creme de la Mer, the moisturising cream at the moment. And then I use the Garnier Anti-Aging SPF 50 as my SPF. So that is what is on my face. I did take the creme de la mer right up around my eyes just to, and the Kiehl's Hydro Pump as well, that's ophthalmically tested. So they went right up to my eyes so I didn't use a separate eye cream. Um, but that is what we are starting with. As I am interested in seeing how the foundation sits and everything, I don't want to put on a primer that will uh, kind of affect the longevity too much and I don't want to prime all over my face. So I am going for the Lancome LA Base Pro Pore Eraser and I'm basically just going to prime here. So that way I can see how it actually kind of lasts and you know in terms of texture etc on the rest of my face. There we go. So this is the old packaging, I believe this is now in a pump dispenser. Just take the excess onto my forehead a little bit. So essentially I've just primed through my T-zone, that's where I get particularly oily because this foundation is quite kind of light coverage summer sunshine natural foundation I feel like my oil is probably going to come through so I just wanted a wee bit of control through the center of the face but let's get the foundation on so this is my sample it is in the shade 0c which I think will be the right color so I basically just dipped my finger into this little pot and that was kind of one finger being dabbed about. Come a bit closer so that you can see this as it works in. It is actually pale. Obviously Guerlain is a French brand. French brands are not great for going, I think, at either end of the spectrum. Um, you know, they're very, traditionally very good at sort of central colours only. And generally the French are not quite as pale as the likes of myself. So you do tend to see that in their shade ranges. And the thing is, of course, now they're distributed all over the world. That should have probably widened well before now, but I don't think it really did um, until recently. I'm pleasantly surprised by the actual color of the foundation. I'm not quite as surprised by this one because I know already Guerlain have done the zero C and they've actually done a double zero C, which is even paler in the Poirot Gold Matte Foundation um, but that one I was I was really surprised when that launched and I got the sample of it that it was going as pale as it was so yeah really really pleased with that. The skin looks very much light skin it is quite low coverage so you can see like my freckles and things on my forehead are coming through I don't know if you actually can see that in camera but you know you can see these like marks and things so it's not um, a super high coverage foundation but it definitely just looks like skin. I don't know if you can see as well I've got very minimal like brush lines through the foundation in terms of where I've applied it. I applied it with this Zoeva 102 and sometimes in like a thicker foundation you can see the brush lines but that's not really an issue. I feel like sometimes on camera I talk about the colours and it's as if the camera sort of evens things out and maybe I'm talking about how something looks a bit darker or a bit lighter and then on camera it kind of looks the same. You know I'm happy to go out in this. I feel like if I was to build it up it might go a little touch too dark. Like it, you can definitely, in real life you can tell that my face is a slight shade darker than my neck but my neck is you know ridiculously white. 
Um, so I feel like the colour is quite good actually. I think what I might do is do my concealer and then see if I feel like I want to put any more foundation on. But I, I'm quite enjoying that actually and I don't feel like it's emphasising any texture on my face. I don't know if I'm mad about it in terms of it being a super light coverage sort of healthy skin looking foundation. Like I'm not against that. But yeah, I think generally I, if I'm putting foundation on, I want something higher coverage than this at the moment in terms of where my makeup references are lying. But in terms of delivering on what it promises to deliver on, which is a very natural skin evening out, like letting your skin look luminous and breathing kind of summer foundation, I do feel like it's delivering. So I'm going in with the Beauty Pie Under Eye Corrector. There we go. So I feel like I basically, basically don't look like I'm wearing any makeup right now. You can definitely tell my under eyes are suddenly brightened from what they wear. Definitely it's like meshing into the skin really well, like it's not sitting on top of the skin. I feel like the more I've had it on, you know, in the last couple of minutes, the more I'm liking it actually. For under eye concealer, I'm using my Makeup Forever Ultra HD Invisible Concealer. This is nearly done and I keep I keep thinking that, you know, every time I use it, this will be the last use that I get out of it and then more comes, <laughs> which I shouldn't really complain about, but I would have quite liked it for my my last few months of empties and I'm a bit like, when am I getting you in my empties? Um, I've had it for ages as well. I bought this when I went to New York with Lindsay, Lauren and Jill. The four of us went in February 2016. And I've still got it. It's still going. I feel like it really should have just finished. Like, I've never put it in a project pan or anything, but I feel like just for the age of it, and the fact it is a concealer, like, it's a very utilitarian type of product that just does a job that I have used it to do. I feel like I should have finished it just naturally by now um, without needing to try and project pan it or anything, but it keeps going. But as I say, shouldn't really complain about that. And then just in terms of my redness around my nose and on my chin, I'm going in with the Tarte Shape Tape. Maybe put a little dot of that here and here as well, just to take down a couple of marks. Like how I started that with like, oh, a little dot here and here, and I'm like, mm, all of these. So I'm just going to spot conceal on a couple of little marks that I've got on my skin. So this is how my base is looking pre-powder. Um, so I actually really quite like that. I wasn't, I really wasn't sold on the idea of this foundation or anything. It didn't massively appeal to me, but quite liking it now that it's on. Hourglass Veil Translucent Powder. And again, just in terms of trying to really test the foundation out, I am just going to powder kind of right through the centre and not towards the sides. This isn't like a super heavy duty powder anyway, just right when I get oily setting under my eyes. So there we go, that is my base done. So if I come close to the camera, I feel like in terms of texture etc, it's really not emphasising any of the texture in my face. I am really, really overdue. <laughs> Um, some hair removal, so there's definitely texture there to be emphasised and I don't think it's doing too bad a job. So, hmm, so far so good. For my eye makeup, I'm going to reach into my palette of singles. So I'm actually, I'm trying to go through all of these at the moment, test them out and see if any of them could be decluttered basically. I am going to start with this one. So this was from the Marc Jacobs Smartorial palette. So it's basically just a base shade. So just using this essentially to create a more even eyelid and kind of blank out any discoloration or veins or whatever. I find this shade quite good for that. It's quite a pigmented base shade. I find sometimes like the sort of base shades are basically translucent which it's fine if you just want the sort of texture of a powder, but I want something to kind of block out the veins and things because my skin is so fine that I feel like you see all of that coming through. So uh, that's what I like this one for. So with the base in place, 
I'm going to go into this shade here, which is Colourpop Team Captain. And I think I want to do a sort of a halo eye. So I'm going to start by taking that in, over and out of the sides. And I'll just build that up gradually. Anyway, this is absolutely nothing to do with the makeup, but are any of you guys Les Mis fans and do you remember when the film came out? So I'm going to be honest, like the film is not my favourite thing, but one of my absolute favourite things that I'd kind of forgotten about and then rediscovered recently, if you guys know George Blagden who was in the film, um, he did that cover of I Will Follow You Into The Dark by... Death Cab for Cutie, was it? Is that who sang that originally? It was Death Cab. I just had to check that. Teenage Me is appalled. So yeah, he did a cover of it and like changed the lyrics to make it about Grantar and Elgil Rath. Angel Rath. Can't speak today. I'd kind of forgotten about it and then it just popped into my head really randomly the other day. And I went and the video was still on YouTube. And it's still glorious and I still really, really enjoy it. So if you had also forgotten about it, take this as your cue to go watch it again. And if you'd never seen it in the first place, I'm going to link it up down below and it is glorious and I hope you enjoy it. I am using a MAC 217 at the moment, by the way. Okay, so there we are. I've kind of got the halo eye in place. Just to emphasise it, I've got my Katie Jane Hughes Spectrum number 15 brush so it looks like this and I'm just going to go back into that white and just really pick out that mid just so that it's definitely got the sort of halo eye effect there we are so I've got hooded eyes so a lot of this is just a kind of waste of time in me but that's why I take it up kind of above the crease because once I've got mascara on that's really all you're going to see but obviously do what suits your eye shape if you like these colours and you want to recreate the look and I am now picking up my Spectrum Katie Jane Hughes number 12 brush and I'm going to run Colourpop Team Captain just along my lower lash line not smoking it out or anything too too big just running it along more colour here, depositing it here first and then just dragging along the excess. I feel like my eyeshadow always looks really patchy here on camera but in real life it's okay. I had a brown eyeshadow that I really like which actually is also a Colourpop one called Free Rain I think. I had it on a few videos ago and in real life I loved my makeup but on camera I felt like my eyeshadow looked really patchy, it's really odd. That is Team Captain under the eyes as well. So now I'm going back to my number 15 brush and I'm actually going into this shade here which is Colourpop Tea Garden. I'm going to load a little bit of that up on the brush and then that's going to be going on top of the white for the halo. And as I say I'm taking it up a little bit you don't have to, like you could keep it so that it's just a complete kind of surprise on the lid. Um, but I do take it up just a little bit above the crease. So you can see how that's just lifted that whole side. Tea Garden is a really, really beautiful shade. I really, really enjoy it. So that is Tea Garden on the centre here. That is it on both eyes. I am just going to nip a little bit back into Team Captain just to make sure... We are keeping that halo. I feel like this sort of eye look that my eyes just look quite sore until the rest of my makeup's on. Do you guys ever get that? Like, you know it'll look fine in the end, but when you're doing it, you're doubting yourself, even though you know it'll be fine. But you're like, what if this is the one time it's not fine? For eyeliner, I'm going in with the Victoria Beckham eyeliner. This is in the shade Olive taking that on the waterline. Oh, the contact lens that's in this eye is determined to make a bid for freedom and I'm determined it's not going to. It's 
straight line water line right into the inner corners just to give that kind of definition just to make sure that's kind of blended I'm going back in with the spectrum number 12 and a little bit of team captain just under the water line here again and taking the brush just right along just to make sure there's no sort of harsh bits here. Warren actually got me that um, Victoria Beckham eyeliner for my birthday last year I think and oh it's so beautiful I never want to be without it. I feel like it lasts well in my waterline as well which you can't often say but it's so so pigmented like you barely need to touch it and it's you know deposits colour. Eyeliner done. I think I will do the mascara because I feel like that is really throwing this out is that there's no mascara on yet. We'll curl my lashes using the Shuamura eyelash curler. I am really really excited and pleased that Samantha Chapman of Pixie Woo back in the day is back on YouTube with her own channel. Um, I absolutely, I always loved, oh it just pinched my eye. Always loved Sam's style of makeup. It's always kind of a bit grungy and a bit messy and just the kind of makeup that I really like. So. Very, very pleased that she's back on YouTube. But anyway, what put me in mind of that, eh, I think because I've kind of pinched my eye there, I'm just going to let it sit for a minute. I'm going to actually move on to my eyebrows and I'm using the MAC Brow Styler in the shade Penny. But yeah, what put me in mind of Sam there for a minute is that she's got these small eyelash curlers. I think she got them from Guru Makeup Emporium and I'm quite tempted to look into them. I feel like mine have had their day and they're Shuamura, so the last time I checked you can't get Shuamura in the UK although to be fair it was quite a while ago that I checked so you may be actually, there's probably some website somewhere that will sell me um, replacement pads which is really what I need, the actual eyelash curler I'm sure is fine I think it's just the, you know, the pads kind of have a life and I'm sure I got replacement pads with it. I think I've probably used them all and if I haven't used them all, any that I have used are long lost. So basically, yeah, either Shumura pads for my eyelash curler are required or a new eyelash curler and I'm, I quite like the look of that one that she's got and it's it's small and it gives you a little bit more control and I quite fancy that in terms of just being able to just curl like the outside lashes to kind of lift the eye a bit without curling the whole way along. Really need to bleach my eyebrows. Might do that tonight actually. Let's go back to the mascara. I feel like my eyes have calmed down a little bit now. Anyway, so mascara wise, I don't know if this is any use to anyone to tell you about it, but this is the CoverGirl Super Sizer. Now it's really old, I bought this in America absolutely years ago but it's one of those ones I've just kept reaching for other ones first so I finally got round to this, opened it yesterday and I am so impressed with it, I really really like it. Um, so it's a really really thin sort of plasticky wand which I really like. Because I do have hooded eyes I think essentially what I like in a mascara is adding length but with separation. See my eyes are still spasming, they've just blinked. Whew. My eyes don't want to play today. It's been really really warm weather so my hay fever has been out. I have taken antihistamines but my hay fever is just out in sort of full full bloom at the moment. So that's fun. Really really like this mascara and then I was looking for it to link in the video that's gone up to Day, which is my Dublin haul because I was wearing it yesterday when I filmed that video so I was looking for it to link to put it in the description box and it seems to have changed packaging and CoverGirl isn't available in the UK so I wasn't getting many hits for it but I'm hoping it's still out in America because it's really good I would definitely buy this again and it didn't move on me yesterday I've got very very like 
smudgy lashes. I think it's a combination of oily skin, eye shape and I don't know, just the, the look of the jaw that mascara tends to smudge on me. And this one didn't move yesterday, so I was really, really pleased with it. it I mean, it doesn't say it's waterproof or anything, but I mean, even waterproof mascara usually moves on me. So yeah, very into this CoverGirl Super Sizer. I'm hoping that the new packaging doesn't indicate a reformulation because I like this a lot. So that's it on this eye, obviously not on this eye. Like if I stand back, like can you see just the difference this mascara has made? It's mad. Love it. Love it so much. So really hoping that you can still get this in the US and that it's not been reformulated. And if you are in the US or you're going on holiday or whatever, this is amazing. CoverGirl Super Sizer, like hello lashes. Actually, like I almost wish I'd put on less of a, an eye today so that you could just see that on its own just without any kind of darkening behind it. It would really stand out more. It's so impressive. Anyway, let me do the other eye. So just because my eyes have been watering and things, I'm gonna go in with a little bit more concealer under the eye just to add a little bit of brightness back in because I think it's been lifted a bit and I had to wipe under the eye where I had smudged my mascara. Let's clean that up a bit. I'm going to finish in the eye area with my brow gel. So this is MAC Penny as well. I think this is kind of running out, so might need to replace this at some point, but hopefully we'll get a little bit longer out of it. I think I use more brow gel than I do the brow pencil in terms of getting the colour so that the colour of my brows, see it's going a little bit can you see that there? Like it's getting kind of thick in ways, like it still brushes up okay. Not as neat as it once was. I feel like I've always got quite a lot of tidy up to do after I do my brows now, but I can't really complain because I got this filmed when I got this. I got this before going to my friend's wedding in October. They got married on Halloween. I've had it since then, so I don't think I can really complain, but I don't think I'm getting as much like coverage and things out of it now. But as I say, I also really need to bleach my eyebrows and that will help a lot, so don't condemn it too quickly. Once the hair that it's working with is lightened, it might still go for a while in terms of giving coverage to it. But yeah, I feel like I really need to coat my hair. Because like the brow pencil obviously goes on the skin, but I feel like this is what actually changes the existing brown hairs to more of a red. On to the cheeks and I'm going into my Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow and I've got my MAC 168 so I'm going into this bronzy side first. That is the sculpt side on my face. Then for blush, I'm sticking with the same brush and I'm going into this, which is uh, Diego Del Palma. It's like a bronzer on one side, a blush on the other side. Kind of just swirl, I sort of swirl the brush here. So it's more on the blush side. Use that to just lift a little bit. Wanted something kind of, because I've got the green eye, you want something well, I want something sort of peachy, bronzy to go with that. I feel like orangey peaches tone in best with green. Um, obviously, you do you, but I think green and orange shades look kind of nicer together than green and pink. In terms of makeup, I actually love green and pink as a colour combination, like in furniture or clothing or whatever, but I feel like on my skin tone, green and orange are better together than green and pink. And I'm now going into the other side of this, into the highlight side on a Katie Jane Hughes Spectrum Number no. 8 brush. And just taking that in that sort of C shape around the eye. And my camera battery is flashing at me, so that's great. 
So I just decided to let my camera charge for a little while there while I put my dress on, whatever. So in terms of my hair, on Friday night, which, so two nights ago, I had rolled it all backwards in these foam rollers and slept in that, let it set. So when I brushed it out yesterday, that was what my hair was kind of freshly brushed out from in my Dublin haul video. Then last night, I basically just kind of rolled them up as they were rolled the curls up as they were and put it in with a curvy grip. So I'm just going to uncurvy it and see what it looks like. I'm just trying to use less heat on my hair and, you know, if I can pin it overnight or whatever and that helps keep the shape for longer without needing to restyle it, then all the better. So this is it just unpinned from those curls. I'm going to take my dry bar hairbrush so it's kind of like a wet brush in terms of the space of the the bristles and whatever and I'm just going to brush that out. I feel like this side always goes better than this side, I don't really know why, probably because there's more hair in this side or whatever. But it never seems to kind of go quite as easily as this side does. So kind of brushing that, twisting it under a little bit and then just running my hands at the end to smooth the, the frizz a little bit. Oh, I think that'll do. It'll kind of fall as the day goes on and do its own thing so we'll let it do what it wants to do. Then lip wise I am going in with MAC Can Do. I would have done Lady Danger or Patrick Ta, She's Not From Here or MAC Morange or something but They've all been used, so under the rules of what I'm trying to do right now with going through all my makeup and testing it all, I'm trying not to keep reusing things. So I haven't used this one yet. So this is MAC Can Do. So it's still a kind of bright orange. Can Do is one of the luster finishes. And this was from the bronzing collection in 2020. So yeah, it's probably a bit more pinky coral than I would have gone for. I would have gone for more of a kind of straight orange generally, but this is what was available. So this is the lip that I am ending it with. I'm just going to pin up the, the sides a little bit. Never mind that plan. We're just going to brush it back down. I'm very much still learning how to work with these foam rollers and the next day and the next day here um so it just it's it's a learning process so yeah this is how i'm leaving my hair actually never mind not going to bother trying to pin it or anything i feel like it's a little bit too kind of neat and tidy looking for this makeup and this dress but sometimes you just gotta work with it so this is what my makeup is looking like let me come closer I think the white balance is better now. It seemed to be making me very red and very dark earlier. Um, so this is what it looks like. I am not going to use a setting spray despite the fact that I have one in my project pan and it's so nearly done and I would love it to be done. But I just want to see how this foundation kind of lasts without all of that. So we just primed through the T-zone and powdered through the centre as well. So should get an idea of longevity etc from today. It is now half past 12 because doing this in camera makes it take so much longer than doing it anyway would take. Uh, so I need to head off but I will check in with you once I am back to see how this foundation has worn. But overall I'm really happy with how makeup has come out. So I am home, it is half past 8 so it has been I left the house about half past 12, so it's been over eight hours since I left the house. So the makeup's definitely been on my face for probably the better part of nine hours, really, in terms of the base, at least. Um, so as you can see, my contact lenses did make their bid for freedom, and I switched over to my glasses. Um, but yeah, like, I am so impressed. So I haven't touched up at all, other than my lipstick, which obviously is well away at this point anyway. Um, but I haven't done any more concealer, done any powder or anything. Now, as you can see through my forehead, my oil is definitely coming through, which is not a surprise with this kind of foundation. You know, it's not remotely claiming 
to be oil controlling but I do have to say it is nothing like what I thought it would have been. In terms of this foundation being from the terracotta range, being a summer launch, being very natural, very glowy, I was expecting to be an oil slick by the end of today. But the other thing, if you guys can see this, although yes my oil is coming through and it is coming through kind of all over my face, it's not breaking up my foundation in a really patchy way. So although the oil is coming through and you can see it's, you know, it's coming through all over and you can see like my foundation's kind of rubbed away, I've got hay fever so I've been blowing my nose so that's, you know, no foundation to any extent really is going to stand up to nose blowing associated with like hay fever or colds or whatever, it is what it is. I feel like I'm having to really look to see how it's broken down. I feel like when I just look at my overall face for this to be eight hours on and bearing in mind it's been a very hot, humid, sweaty kind of a day, I feel like my face looks really really good. As you can see that mascara has not smudged at all today which I am so impressed with. I can't believe that's a drugstore mascara. It'll have been less than $10 and it hasn't smudged at all. The only other mascara that I have found that's been this level of not smudging on me was the first Hourglass Extreme Caution mascara, the triangular tube. But I had a weird experience with that. I got a mini in my advent calendar and I found the mini one smudged. The full size didn't but the mini one did. So really confused, basically feel like I need to get another full size of that to actually check in with it to try and figure out what was going on there. But yeah, this one is still intact and hasn't smudged under my eyes. You can see as well, like obviously my eye makeup is not perfect and you know, like my eyeshadow has creased and whatever above my eyes but has worn away below my eyes. But you can see the the remnants of enough of that Victoria Beckham eyeliner as well that it still looks like my basic eye look that I put on this morning is in place. So all in all, really impressed, really really pleased with how this looks for being 8 hours on and today I have done 15,676 steps according to my Fitbit so we've been walking around town, we were in Princess Square which is like a glass roof so the sun was coming through even when we were sitting down. It's been hot, it's been humid. We're due some thunderstorms to actually break up the air and the air is that kind of way that you can tell that we need to have that kind of storm to break it. So that's the kind of weather we're in today. And I am a super oily person so I really expected in this weather to have oil slicked all my makeup off within like two or three hours, never mind eight hours. And I feel like my skin looks really, really skin-like. It's not perfect, you know, you can see those marks coming through. It's not a high coverage foundation, but I feel like it does look really skin-like and really natural and, you know, enough coverage to kind of say that it's evened out more than it would be if I didn't have any makeup on, you know. It's not a full coverage foundation, but it's definitely kind of put a veil over the, the worst of my redness and my unevenness and just giving me a more even canvas and it's definitely stuck around. I did put some primer here and we also, I powdered through the T-zone. As I said at the time though, that Hourglass powder, it's not super oil absorbent powder, it's more just light setting-y, dusting-y powder. Um, but I didn't put anything on here at all. So I think that's probably the best way to judge the longevity and the wear is kind of down here where there's been nothing else over that foundation and yeah I feel like it's really really stuck around. I am so impressed. Anyway because I am a bit oily I'm going to blot off with my blotting paper. Yes very oily. Oofed. But let's see what it looks like after I actually take this excess oil off. I am really interested in it at the moment. Rare Beauty have this like little two-in-one kit and it's got blotting papers on one side and some pressed powder on the other side. I am very, very interested in it. I feel like it's definitely going on my birthday list. Oof. 
so much oil in this complexion. I think that will probably be the, the last of us though if we do my nose. Right, there we go. So, I feel like that hasn't disturbed my makeup too much at all doing that. Like it's, as I say, you can see more redness coming through my nose but I've been blowing that today. But if you look at my forehead, I feel like I've been able to blow it off all right there without lifting all the makeup underneath. If I was blotting whilst I was out and about, I would probably blot and then do a little bit more concealer. I feel like I could be doing with a bit more concealer under my eyes and then repowdering. I'm just going to take my makeup off after this. So I'm not going to bother doing that. But yeah, I feel like I've been able to blot that off there without any kind of disturbance to the basic base. I feel like I could touch this up quite easily and it would look absolutely fine to keep going about my day with. Yeah, all in all, really would rate this foundation. You'll know yourself, it's low coverage. It's not meant to be a super high coverage perfecting foundation, so if, it, if that's what you're looking for, this isn't for you. But if you're looking for something to just kind of even skin out and look really skin-like, and I think there must be a bit of oil control in there because I feel like I would have been more oily than I was before I blotted if there hadn't been. And the Poirot Gold Matte is phenomenal for oil control. I feel like Guerlain have got some kind of like secret technology in there. Because at the moment I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible Matte Foundation. That's the one that's in my project pan. And I get more oil through using that foundation that's like a matte foundation and whatever than I did today with that non-matte foundation. So yeah really really into that actually i think it's really really pretty especially as you would maybe think with the kind of launch that it is if you had like holidays or something to go on i feel like it would be a lovely foundation for like a hot weather holiday where you're not looking to have that super perfected high coverage finish you know you want something that lets your skin breathe and looks natural and whatever I feel like this would be such a good choice for that and if you're oily as I said I think there's some kind of oil control in there but anyway I hope you have enjoyed the video I hope it's been interesting or useful I feel like because I have quite a lot of structured videos to my channel so I have like my project pan every month my beauty inventory update my money diaries I feel like I quite often I'm talking about product I'm talking about empties I'm talking about using stuff up but not always kind of talking about actually using the products and showing you me using the products so I do want to try and maybe do more sort of get ready with me's and stuff where you're actually seeing the products in action rather than just me talking about how much I've used it or how much it's been worth to my inventory or whatever so let me know if you've enjoyed it I hope you have done and I will see you on Sunday with another video